Hi everyone, welcome back to the Collabcast. I'm editor Katie Cusack here with editor David King and local professional actor Aaron Moore. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. <laughs> I'm doing very well. I'm even better now being uh, uh. on the show with you guys. <laughs> it's been definitely sort of like a milestone and capital region milestone <laughs> to be to be on this. So thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Uh, it's it's you've been you've it been knocking good. down our door to get on. Right. <laughs> right. I, I have. I said, Where are these guys at? <laughs> if you didn't, I was gonna bust through that door during the interview <laughs> and be like, "Oh, you're interviewing me now." We had to, yeah, we had to prevent the Kool Aid Man during our last interview. <laughs> and oh. so. It was getting there. It was getting to that point. <laughs> Was we right checked every point. room in this <laughs> yeah, godforsaken this building. Right. Hope stop everything. But in all honestly, uh, honestly, you work in the building. You didn't. You didn't know where yeah. the uh, where the studio was. I didn't know. <laughs> Nobody does. We keep that it secret. That could have been a secret. That could have yeah. been a secret uh, between uh, us. Uh, well, it's, it's, now it's out there. <laughs> so. Well, I don't want people to actually think that you were knocking down our door. I mean, that would be <laughs> that would be unjust. I know where things are. <laughs> I know where things are. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm <laughs> <laughs> But uh, you're here today because, I mean, you've had a long presence as uh, not only an actor, but as someone who does education and activism. Um, and ha you've been trying to advance the cause, uh, I think, for quite some time now. And we were just talking off camera about the idea that there has been sort of a renaissance in terms of uh, the community, um, d diversity, and sure. folks um, helping each other, I think, more than yeah. normal. Um, Maybe there aren't as many opportunities still as there should be. Right. Um, so, what do you? Th where do you think we are? And compared to when you first started? Uh, well, when I first started, I, I was I, I was a child actor. So when I first started, I was acting locally around the area uh, through my aunt. She, she was a, a director here, and, and I would act through her shows that she directed. And other people would see me act and say, "Oh, can I can I have Aaron in my show?" And through that, you know, kind of train, and then did that through high school. Um, I stopped for a little bit and then came back in high school and didn't really find that passion. Um, I think right now um, we are in a really great growth and really uh, great um, sort of growth going, you know, and up and, and beyond. And that's really great with uh, theater companies, especially theater companies like uh, like Illuminate Theater Company and the uh, 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 Black Theater Troop of Upstate New York and Kalaloo Theater and uh, a few others and uh, other organizations like uh, uh, Youth FX and, and and so many others that are that are uh, kind of led by people of color and supported by other people of color. I think that's it, it's been it's such a blessing and an honor to kind of go from acting in Albany years and years ago where it was only kind of like one or two sort of shows that were kind of focused on people of color, by people of color, directed and written by people of color, to like now having almost this plethora of choices where I can like one weekend go to this theater company and then next weekend go to this one and, and working together and, and using different actors and different directors like, hey, you acted in my show, can you direct my next show? Or hey, you did this, can you come do this for my for my next show? I think it's, it's such a beautiful thing and such a great thing for the capital region and this growth. I would say that the balance still is nowhere near uh, up to scale or up to par with that. I think for so long uh, there's been an absence of uh, voices of people of color um, in the community here, in the theater community here, unfortunately. And it's kind of really sad because there's so much creative uh, talent and energy and power within the Capital Region community through dance and poetry and music and art and acting that to kind of ignore that for so long has, has just really been mm -hmm. almost criminal. And I, I think even being in that um, at a such early age and seeing that and kind of being a part of that, it, it, it's kind of heartbreaking to see. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully with these the rising these new theater companies and theater heads, um, that's going to change. And it's on its way. It's on its, excuse, it's, it's on its way changing, but it's still nowhere near um, up to scale. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately. I mean, ha um, having done stories on Illuminate and also now having Morgan writing a column for us, um, one of the things that really strikes me is like the weight on her to carry yeah. that project and feel like this has to happen because we need it in the community. Right. And um, But then also, you know, seeing that there are times where she grapples with like, 
can I carry this? And mm. do I have enough energy to do this this month? Mm-hmm. And do I, like, what about my life? And what about all this other stuff? And yeah. I know that, to, to, I mean, obviously it takes people to carry things on their back and really force it through and, and long-term commitment. Um, and you've, you've been there, obviously. Yeah. Um, but wh- what do you, you know, I think one of her questions that she's asked publicly even is like, how do I take this to the next level? Um, and so we're in a good spot now, but, mm. but what do you think needs to happen to take it to a level where... Um, I think uh, we. I think funding is definitely one of those things for yeah. sure. And I think um, I think the community is there, and I think the want is there. So that's really great. So we're in a really good place for that. I think funding at this point is kind of where we want to be and where we need to be looking at and how. Where uh, if I can't fund outsourcing, how do I fund together? Like there's a re- like uh, Issa Rae had a really good quote when it came to networking. She goes, "A lot of people." think networking has to be you network up to go places but it's also networking out networking mm. together and you know for us for these communities um you know there's so much of this of the capital region of this of upstate new york and and the the capital region da, 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 of this fill in the blank you know that should definitely be a forefront of well i'm here i'm at this level i've come up through the scales and i'm here at this level i see that you're new and i see that you're up and coming how can I help you? How can I support you? How can I help you network? How can I help you grow? How can I help you, you, you know, even so much if I can't do funding, if I can't fund you, what resources can I give you? Can I give you my facility? Can I let you use my theater? Can I let you use, you know, some of my staff? You know, can I volunteer some of my staff to you? How can I help you? I think those questions yeah. also need to kind of be at the forefront of how can I help you? I don't think there's been a lot of that outsourcing from um, the, uh, Theater, other theaters that kind of outsourcing from this uh, community where they've kind of been like, well, how can we help you? How can we support you? Yeah. Some, I'm not going to say not at all, but just not enough. I'll say that. Yeah. It's, there's a need for people to like come to your door as well. You right. not having to break down everybody's right. door and ask like where you can go or like, Hey, like, can you like help us out? It's like, right. there are these huge institutions with a lot of resources to give Absolutely. and like, I, yeah. I, I, you know, having <clears throat> written early on in my career here um, for Metroland and various other places, and you know, obviously growing up reading those papers and and the lo- you know being involved in local media, um, and then going away. I mean, one of my frustrations then was that there wasn't coverage of communities past like. The, the everything white that was going on on Lark Street, right. um, and it was a fight to get anything about artists of color or right. anyone doing anything interesting that, that weren't like the standard few people. Right. And it changed when I came back, there were, there had been change and there's right. been major progress. You right. see Absolutely. stories about Absolutely. these people, but at the same time, it, there's a gap. Right. Yeah. There's like a, you know, because we know that it, like, but, and you know, and I've talked to people about the idea that there's this nor I mean, you know, Balin from youth of X yeah, and, yeah. and you know, that there is this sort of, ingrained northeastern sort of racism that's quieter and right. um more insidious in some ways oh, yeah, you know um that there was this unspoken culture of that where it's like well who are they and what's the audience they don't you know they're not going to read the paper or yeah. whatever right. it is well that's it's not even, it's that's still yeah. Uh, yeah and i can't tell you just from a person though or from listening to other people's stories like, well, i went to so-and-so and the first thing they said well audience wouldn't like that or I went to so-and-so and they said, well, you know, we you know, we don't think we'll get the, the backing for that. So right. we're going to pass on that and we won't do this. But then the same, and, and throughout, you know, the same way it would be like, oh, well, here, help us grow. <laughs> help us change. We will, help, we'll, we'll, you know, help right. us do this. Help us, you know, fill in the blank. So, there's, you know, there's been a lot of that. And I think just there, I think all, the Capital Region area is very special in a way because it sort of mirrors the sort of microchasm of, I'm sorry, macrochasm of the world, especially the country around us. And I think what's really kind of almost frustrating about that is one of those major things is racism, right? Racism is one of the huge, one of the most taboo and major topics of the world that we face. And I think Albany has kind of absorbed so many things, the capital region has absorbed so many things around uh, uh, culturally and socially and whatnot, racism has definitely been one of those things. But it's it's sort of that underlying sort of thing. So we have this and this and this. 
Uh, racism, no, no, we don't. We, we don't <laughs> no, 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 we don't have that. We don't need that. We don't, we don't have that. I mean, we do, but I mean, it's, it's, it's little. It's, it's, it's in our, it's in our yeah. pocket. It's, 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 it's not showing. But, you know, and it's, it's sort of that blinders are on to it. And I think um, the creative and entertainment world here has definitely affected, has been affected by that. And it's sort of kind of that underhand language of basically saying, yeah, we don't want to do black shows. It's also wanna... like calling back to what you said earlier about how like there are so many people of color with stories and art to share and like not a lot of places to put it. And then also sort of being like, okay, and then there are these people who are at that doorstep and like not letting people in saying, oh, well, our audience wouldn't read that. And I read this post by Danielle Collin mm, recently yeah, that's yeah. been like stuck with me mm. the past like week or so. And she said, um, must be nice to write about flowers and have people actually be thinking about flowers and not, you know, other things right. about like what it what does it mean? And right. like. It's not the exact quote because I can't. No, I know. I saw the post. <laughs> but as it's well, so yeah. like powerful because it's like everything that people of color get highlighted for or like talked about it has to be revolved around their own identity and race. It feels like like it has to right. be about well, I'm doing the I'm doing this work and carrying that weight and like having this like responsibility on them and it's like well, well they have other stories too right. like <laughs> and it's they're almost, right. creative things to share that are just as interesting and Absolutely. beautiful we have this like in, uh, you know there's so many things that so many stories are untold and so many sort of the stories that are told so many different perspectives and depths and, and nuances and different ways of telling it that are out there in the world but we only, especially here, it's kind of like we only can do like the same couple shows. Yeah. It's like, you know, I'm tired of playing your Walter Lees. I'm tired of playing your Troys. I'm tired of playing your Tom Robinsons. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of playing, you know, fill in the blank of the same right. four or five black shows that kind of go on yeah. all the time. Every two or three years here in the area that when they do pick them. Um, and it's kind of like there, you know, there's this huge like sea of plays and shows uh that are that are going on mm -hmm. that that people are, are writing or have been written you know since like it's 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 interesting when it comes to especially black theater every day i learn that there's a new show that i didn't know it's not even like new from like the 2000s it's like something from like the 80s and 90s but wow i didn't even know this show existed mm -hmm. you know and i never would dream to see it here in the area yeah and uh it, it's just you know Tupac had a quote, and I'm, I'm going to paraphrase this, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> you get it wrong. And it was kind of like, you know, when people are, you know, if people are outside starving and hungry, and then there's people on the other side of a room that have food and, and filling up with food, but their door's locked, and we always sing, hey, please, can we come in? Please, can we come in? You never let us in. I mean, eventually, we're going to kick down the door and bust in. And I think in that sense of what we're doing now is what we see with these theaters with you know the great work that you know illuminate theater is doing and Kalaloo theater is doing and and uh, the black theater true Bus state new york is doing and others are you like we you like you know what we're tired of asking mm -hmm. we're tired and tired we just sick and tired of being sick and tired of yeah. asking so we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our own sort of community and we're gonna do our own thing and that's what's gonna happen that's what's happening now and and I think there's gonna be more of that and I think that's that's gonna be on the rise as people are we're tired of asking mm -hmm. you know we're tired of asking and then we're tired of being asked to make other theaters better but yeah. then <laughs> yeah. our voices don't go anywhere yes I had like a proving yourself all right, the time right I just had an interview with uh, Rachel Chavkin from Hades Town, who obviously is a white woman, but she's in town. She was the only female director, obviously, on Broadway this past season. Mm -hmm. And she won a Tony, and she got up there and was like, this is bullshit, you know, and talked about it being sort of uh, a lack of creativity and imagination on, on the part of folks who are whose job is to be imaginative and creative. Right. And what I find interesting is that Obviously, there are a lot more people from the city coming up and doing staging work here or, or rehearsing. And she's in town in August, well, Catskill for the Lumberyard, doing this piece, uh, <sighs> the name of which I am not going to get right. Yeah. But, but essentially, you know, uh, it's examining, it's about reconstruction. It's examining right. reconstruction mm -hmm. through the lens of uh, uh, Gone with the Wind as a, like a mo Confederate monument. And right. they've got 20 people, more than 20 people, in the cast 
and they're they're also writers. Mm -hmm. And you know, so they're putting together this very provocative work down there that's forward thinking, has a diverse cast and all, and it'll come and it'll workshop two shows and then it's gone. But places like Lombard and places in Hudson and more and more drawing the city audience and creatives. And I do wonder if eventually they're going to start tapping into the talent pool around here. And but you say eventually, and that's such a and I and and, and I you know I lived in the city for about two years mm -hmm. and. Uh, plethora of talent and great talent. I have still a couple of friends of mine who are acting and getting gigs and we're on Broadway and uh, great, great people. But the eventually is the word that kind of stood out for me. That's yeah. such a, you know, 2019, it's kind of like a vent, and not even fully, like such an, like, New York State is bigger than New York City. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, my, and, New, and New York State is bigger than New York City. And I'm not even talking about just yeah. that, but just in general, because that happens, right? Yeah. That happens here. It happens. It's like, well, we'll just, we'll just get New York City, or we'll get New York City actors, or we'll get New York yeah. City dancers. And it's like you have this, like New York State is bigger than New York City. And you have all these people that work their butts off mm -hmm. to develop their talent and to work on their skill. They go to school for it and they come back to their towns and they come back to their cities yeah. and they go, hey, look what I did. Look what I, you know, did. Look what I learned. Look what I can do. And they, you know, people are like, oh, that's nice. Well, we're going to go to yeah. New York City. And it's sort of like a venture. It's like, well, I mean, that that's the sad part. Of that. And I mean, again, not for that story, but just in general. Well, yeah, I, I hear that, I hear that I think, a lot. I mean, I think eventually up here certainly applies. And in this, right. what, I, what I guess I meant more of is there are these, there's more creativity. Right happening up here because folks from the city are, are now escaping rent and blah, 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 blah. Right. And they're looking to take on more provocative work. So is there a chance that, you know, not that because they're not casting people of color, but because they just new to the area, you know, <laughs> I'm just wondering if perhaps we'll, we'll see more opportunities, you know, in, right. in that way, uh, in, in, in some ways skip the local, <laughs> right. you know, because there, there are people here who are so massively talented who aren't getting work, you know, regularly, but, right. um, could obviously be noticed by people who don't have blinders on. Right. Um, but yeah, I, no, I get your point right. very much about. Right. And I think, you know, I think that's, a, and I think that's a uh, way to look at it. I think there's a lot of people coming up from the city that kind of are noticing people here too as well. And I think people are kind of saying, well, you guys got all these hidden gems up here and you're not like, what's going on? You know, I can't tell you how many stories of students around the area. Um, you know, we just had, I don't know her name, the actress who, she was in Stranger Things. Yeah. Season. yeah. I won't, I'll, no spoilers, I don't get spoilers. Yeah. Uh, but she was in Stranger Things. She's from Niski Yuna, you know, and we, there's always like a story in like that, you know, from somebody from Schenectady or Albany or Choi or whoever that's up and around doing something. And it's kind of like, it's be like, you know, that's such a you know, great once in a lifetime thing. Like, no, that's not once in a lifetime. There's like a, there's people we here can keep, that, that yeah. we can keep doing that, right? Right. Yep. We can keep doing that. There's people here that are hungry for it, that have the skill for it, that have the talent for it, that are ready to like, hey, let me off the bench, coach. You well, know? <laughs> I mean, I think Youth FX is primed. Oh, absolutely. Uh, because the, the film industry expanding so much right. and needing ta a talent pipeline. Right. And, you know, you see the governor and politicians talking about expanding it, but it exists. Right. You know, and it's more about making sure the connections are made rather right. than just people throwing their hands in the air and going, well, I'm upstate, so I'm going to cast downstate. You know? Right. Like, but. Right. And I think the one, one, of the, well, one of the many things I like about Youth FX is they're definitely like a community-led organization. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's definitely, you know, there's their staff and whatnot, but they're definitely like, hey, we have, we don't have anybody right now that can do it, but we know these people that can do it. Let me give you contact with these people. Or we don't know anybody that uh, we have so and so to do it. Let me. They've done great work for us. Let me give you these these people. And they're very like what, the work that they do is very like community based and like uh, very like centered around. You know, they're based out in Albany, uh, but they do work all over the capital region. But they're definitely like, hey, we are definitely going to pull first and foremost from the talent here mm. in in the capital region before anything. And we'll if we can't, we'll we'll connect you to somebody that can. Yep. And I think that's one of, one of the many things that that I definitely appreciate about uh, spaces like uh, youth effects um, because they do that. Yeah. And I mean, they're finally, I mean, not finally, but they are, it seems like growing at such, oh, yeah. such an amazing rate and getting a lot of do that I think has been owed them for a while. Right. Um, but I, I do wonder if we might see that inspire more folks to get involved and assist them and, and create yeah, more I branches so. of, yeah. you know, um, because the work they do is sort of invaluable and uh, mm -hmm. the films they create and giving right. that, the voice to, to folks right. who otherwise wouldn't. And I mean, you know, it also speaks to your sort of segueing here. You're involved at, uh, at root, you know, at rooted and 
teaching right. there, and that's a community that Youth Have X is technically located in. Right. Um, and Rooted is also bringing this thing, and uh, it, it feels like that creati creativity can only be good for the community. And, oh, absolutely. Um, I'm wondering what your experience has been there now. Um, uh, you know, it's very, uh, just what I, being at Rooted has been such an honor and a blessing, because just with the great work that the owners, uh, Shell, uh, Pion, and um, uh, Jamal Mosley have done there um, is just the work they do on their own. Mm -hmm. um, hearing about it is just is real is you know phenomenal, and then kind of them kind of coming together and creating this entity for other people to not you know not just to participate in, but to also facilitate and teach and lead and to kind of say, well, here here's our space. Our space connects to what you guys want. Let me give you an outlet here where you can instruct, where you can teach, where yeah. you can do yoga. You know, I've, I've, I want to. I'm exploring the yoga. I have. I've never been a yoga person before, <laughs> so, but I'm currently uh, um, uh, hilariously exploring it. Um, uh, you know, still getting adjusted. So I've been to two of their uh, yoga classes so far, and it's such like a such a breathtaking experience to walk in and to see people like look like you and mm. and and to be in this space and to be comfortable in this space i think if anything what i've taken out of uh, being at rooted and working at rooted is comfortability and openness and more than anything and i i think that's that has, that has to be a forefront and um but being there and seeing sort of these healing practices um in one way in one form or another through yoga or or tarot reading or or intention setting or or, or meditation or, or my own theater class and see that and then also see it led and be mostly made up of people of color um, is it, such a, a beautiful a, a beautiful thing to see and mm -hmm. I, it's been such an honor to be a part of that journey with them and with with everybody involved can you tell us a little bit more about your your, sure. your class though so, and yeah, I, so on on Saturdays uh, at currently at the moment at 10 a.m. I teach stand up and act out and uh uh, which is a creative expressions class. Um, it's not. It's not a, so much teach me, teach you how to act in class, though I do, do do those. But this is more of learning at looking at um, stresses in your life, or during the week, or during the day, um, and traumas, current traumas, past traumas, and kind of looking at how to sort of deal with that through the uh, through the theater lens, through theater and acting exercises. You know, I've been taking, uh, you know, I was when I was being trained in theater and acting, the goal was to make yourself a better actor. But with those exercises and training uh, activities that we took in, the sort of, I don't want to say symptom, but the sort of aftermath of it is we, a lot of us became um, sort of whole and, and sort of more connected to ourselves and sort of the world around us, you know? And I often talk to like friends of mine, they go, wow, you sound like really grounded. And I never <laughs> looked at that. And I kind of was like, yeah, you know, I never think I was, you know, I, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't think I was like that either. And, and it, it all was all mostly due to, to, um, theater. I mean, some of it was experience, mm -hmm. but mostly was due to just sort of knowing how to like ground myself and knowing how to connect with myself and stay focused with myself to kind of handle um, stresses and, and, and traumas and things that come up for my own self. A lot of that was through those theater exercises and wow. sort of I kind of put two and two together and, I, and then I kind of put that in those classes. So yeah, my class at 10 a.m. Is, is stand up and act out. It's it's more of a creative expression class. So I want to make sure people, people like, I want to take it, but I don't know how to learn lines. I'm like, no, you don't, don't worry about it. You don't have to learn lines. <laughs> it's nothing like that. You rarely do anything with lines. But it's it's more of a creative expression, uh, professional and personal development through theater exercises. Um, it's really great, you know, and it's, it's really been fun. I've had a lot of sort of, I like to call them aha moments for myself through mm -hmm like students that have come in to take it and to kind of be see that it's been such a, a really great experience and to kind of see people kind of put two and two together and make that connection like wow i never really thought about that before wow you know <laughs> it gave me a different way to look at that or you're like, yeah. oh aha uh -huh. okay and like now I, now i see why this really gets me angry and now i understand <laughs> why this really stresses me out because back then so and so and so and so so it's and it's really great to have this thing that's really been a blessing on my life and to be able to share that with others and then be there for that reaction. Yeah. 
it's really interesting the way that people can use like their art form that they connect to the most and right. like because everybody always talks about really like oh I do this because it helps me so much and and I feel so good when I'm on stage or I feel so good when I'm making art in whatever way right. and then to use that as some almost like a form of therapy and realize right. the power in it is like really cool right we well we just did um, the hers project and mm. with at Albany High School and I was uh, just an acting coach for that yeah uh, but the, the the sort of leadership and teachers at Albany High School really took the yeah. forefront of that uh, my great great friend of mine Noelle Gentile she <laughs> was the, uh, the director and we had a student director there too and uh, that was and just being and I kind of and you know they have this written by women young women and acted by young women mm -hmm. and directed by young women it was such like a sort of now that we're kind of in this world with this you know a lot of movements are happening a lot of you know a lot of voices unheard voices are kind of taking expression you know expression and kind of taking the forefront um and which is great to see and sort of kind of being thrusted in that project uh willingly and, and happily and sort of seeing that right then and there usually people kind of see it gradually but i was kind of like whoa this is interesting but it was yeah. such and i bring that up because it was such an experience to see these young ladies talk about traumas that they've been through that they've experienced that their friends experienced yeah. and kind of turn that to a work of art and using that yeah. art, as you said using that art as a healing method mm -hmm. for themselves and then using that healing method for the people that came to see the show right and for the people that, you know, for the parents and siblings and friends to see the show. And that was one of my favorite, you know, obviously to see the show and see the great, great work that these uh, young ladies put together. But also to see the reaction that the audience had. Yeah. And like we, it was so just kind of like, you know, parents crying and, and yeah. siblings crying like, wow, I didn't like, I didn't know you guys. And, and to see like the fa uh, faculty and staff of, you know, the, uh, the school district of the area kind of go, whoa this was like inside of you guys yeah. this whole time and I think that was kind of like a prime example that I was kind of blessed to see of how healing through the arts took place and that's something that I definitely would yeah. always cherish and um, you know and also to see like you know this this high, you know high school out of this area of all these different theaters gets it right yeah. gets what the message is yeah. gets who needs to be in the forefront mm -hmm. gets whose voices aren't being heard and, and how we can take action and do yeah. it and it's such a relief to kind of every time I work over there I do a project with them over there I'm always like you know something if I if it was like with you guys or like another professional leader I would pick you guys every single time <laughs> because it's, wow. it's such a relief to kind of be in a room of like-minded creatives not even yeah. worrying about the age but just like-minded creatives that that say hey i have a story to say and i'm gonna say it no matter what and it was su it was such a just a really great thing to see yeah and uh it, it stuck out as a prime example of what you just said um sure. of that i ran into noel a couple times during that process and i didn't get to see the show but I was hoping to, but um, she was, I mean, it was clear the impact it was having on her just to, mm. to get through that and carry that weight. And mm. uh, and even enter, you know, uh, she was on a panel for Film Albany. Um, yeah. And for her to sort of transition from that headspace into this more like promotional film sort of headspace, it, I, it was difficult and emotional because you're working with these things that are so raw that yeah. you carry with you and and the stories that are so, I mean, some of the stuff that I, you know, heard about the thing yeah. just, yeah, it was heavy. It was a lot of, you know, heaviness. And um, I think the way that she handled it and, and other uh, staff handled it uh, that were there was first and foremost instructing them how to let it go, mm. how to put it down or how to pick it's it back so up important. and use it for this show. And that was really great, really great to see um, that as much as the talent and the skill in the theater building there, but it was like how to instruct to like, okay, we have this. There's this thing, mm -hmm. right? This 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 thing that was that's ours and that we carry, yeah. unfortunately. But now that we can't get rid of, but we can let go, and then we can like, pick it up, ooh. and we can let it go. We can pick it up. We can use that, and that was really great to see. Wow. Well, thank you so much for coming in. I'm being told that we're up on time, <laughs> oh, but this I is a power, power, told you, I told, I powerful told way to this. end. And I yeah, think no. you know. Um, uh, hopefully, we'll have you back. And, yeah. and talk a little bit more. And um, oh, is there, are there this any was, projects coming uh, up that this um, 
it's, uh, so I'm I'm in a I'm in a current show uh, called Whitewash with uh, phenomenal actors that are in it. Uh, um, Danielle Collins is in it, and that's kind of looking at the scope of African American history from slavery till now, and kind of looking at how racism has affected us in many different ways, and that does it still affect? Question: Does it still affect us? That's going to be opening up in the fall, and but I'll you know I'll share it and let you guys know. That's being directed by Michael Kennedy from Creative Action Unlimited. Mm-hmm. Um, out in, uh, uh, North Greenbush, mm-hmm. um, but that's we're going to be we're going to be doing shows all around. So. Right. Um, but I think that yeah, I think that's about it. Ten o'clock, um, ten a.m. Saturdays. Rudy, my daughter says we're going. So I'll, all right, I don't know if it's we'll see. But I, I let her know, and I thought she'd say no, but she said yes. So. I'm looking for it. I'm looking. Yeah. For it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. No problem. Good to have you. Yeah.